Washington. It's about to fly directly over Seattle. So if you're in the area, uh, it is about to cross over into um, Canada as well. So if you're in that area near that border, uh, go outside, maybe look up. You can always check out spotthestation.nasa.gov to see when it'll fly over you. But it is going to pass over the continental U.S. Um, right now. It's it's flying right over the state of Washington. So I'm sure they, if they looked down right now, would have beautiful views <laughs> of the mountain ranges there. Morning, next milestone being that they will pass through, will not stop at waypoint zero, uh, less than eight minutes from now. And a reminder, we are going to the Zenith or the space facing port of the International Space Station today. They will be uh, next door neighbors with Dragon Endeavor, which is at the forward facing port on node two. It looks like three of them are having, no, four of them are having their midday meal. So on the space station, they use Greenwich Mean Time. Um, it's just a little bit afternoon there, about 12, 10 p.m. A few of them are eating. Again, this is a weekend day, so technically sometimes if there's not operations going on, um, they do get time off on the weekends. They're able to relax, talk to family members. Um, We are just a few minutes now from passing through waypoint zero. And we expect to pass through waypoint one as well. That'll be um, about 20, 25 minutes following our uh, our pass through waypoint zero. Again, these are, these are points built into the uh, docking process. That way, if we needed to hold at these, we definitely can. It's a great opportunity to check out any systems, but the teams here um, in Hawthorne as well as in Houston have pulled go. They're not tracking any issues that would preclude us from um, a safe docking. Again, looking at that coming up at about 6.05 a.m. Pacific. And our Cronus flight controller in Houston is the one who is navigating these cameras on the International Space Station. So they always do a great job of getting us some really amazing views um, as Dragon gets closer. Again, just as a reminder, waypoint zero will mean that Dragon is 400 meters directly below station, and as it maneuvers to waypoint one, it, that is basically swinging the vehicle to out in front of the station. It will be approximately 220 meters away from station. And that is coming up here in just about two minutes from now. We're reaching waypoint zero is coming up in about two minutes. Waypoint one puts us on the docking axis. So it pretty much lines us directly up with that corridor uh, that the spacecraft will follow all the way in to where it docks on the Zenith port of the International Space Station. There is a pause at waypoint two. Uh, that's about 20 meters away. So that is kind of the final check of all. And these views are really awesome. Seeing Earth in the background looking almost so crisp there. <laughs> and Crew 7, once they arrive at the International Space Station, they will have these beautiful views for about six months. Uh, living and working, doing science and research on the International Space Station. We did get an updated docking time. And as a reminder, as Dragon approached, Waypoint Zero was directly under the International Space Station. As it moves to Waypoint One, it's actually going to swing up uh, and align itself with the space station. Um, so you no longer will, looking, will be looking down from the space station and, and have that view of Earth in the background because um, it will be uh, aligned um, with the docking port which is the Zenith port today. It's the space facing side of the International Space Station. Once our astronauts arrive and our cosmonaut arrive to the International Space Station today, they will be members of Expedition 69. Uh, that will remain their designation. So they won't keep these 
these roles, these titles that they have right now. You know, we have Jasmine McBelly as our commander. Once she gets to the International Space Station, she will be a We are about 25 minutes until we expect to reach waypoint one. Sorry, about 35 minutes, I believe. Again, that's that 220 meter. It can be used as a hold point. I don't think we intend to use it as a hold point today, but it is on the docking axis. It'll be directly above the International Space Station, directly above that Zenith port on node two. All right, and a reminder, we are taking your questions on X with the hashtag AskNASA. Uh, we have one from Sahib. Space Station and uh, the crew on board will then return back home. Uh, so Crew 7 will be up there for about six months and come back. We're starting to see the views change a little bit. You know, we were looking directly down on Dragon, but now we are swinging up and in up and above the International Space Station because we'll be docking to that Zenith port. So again, like I mentioned earlier, we were looking directly down on Dragon with the Earth below it. Pretty soon, Dragon will be looking directly down on the International Space Station with the Earth below it. Looks like right now they are flying off the west coast of Senegal, about 260 statute miles above Earth. And if you're just now joining us, you are tuned in to the Crew 7 mission. The crew launched uh, last night at 12.27 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, th uh, excuse me, 12.27 a.m. Pacific Time, 3.27 a.m. Eastern Time. And now the crew is making their way to the International Space Station. We've already had a few burns. We've uh, passed through a checkpoint waypoint zero, and now the vehicle is swinging up towards waypoint one. We are just under 25 minutes away from the expected time of arri arrival to waypoint one, which will put the vehicle in line with the docking. Uh, adapter on the International Space Station and also put the vehicle directly above the International Space Station. So if you're tracking, that's an almost 30 hour ride to orbit. The crew are suited up now. They are in their seats. Uh, they have not had to do so during the flight. And we just got a really cool view <laughs> of one of those Draco thrusters firing, helping us fine tune our approach. And we just had a view from the International Space Station looking at Dragon from a bit further away. And now we've got a very good close up as Dragon gets closer and closer to the International Space Station.
Yeah, looking crystal clear. Again, that nose cone is open. Of course, when we launch, it is closed. Um, and when we re-enter Earth's atmosphere, it's closed to protect that docking mechanism that's beneath it. So that's exactly the point that'll line up with that Zenith port on the International Space Station. It'll dock, the teams on the space station will take some time uh, to make sure they pressurize the vestibule. That's the space between the Dragon hatch and the space station hatch. So when Dragon docks, that space is gonna be out of vacuum. It's been previously exposed to outer space. Um, and we wanna make sure that it's equalized before we open up those hatches and the crew floats in. So that is a, a process that takes about an hour-ish, you know, making sure that we've got all those levels equaled out before we welcome the crew aboard the space station. And as Leah mentioned, after waypoint one is waypoint two, just 20 meters from the International Space Station, there will be a uh, that will be a checkpoint where they, will, where they will make sure that everything is good before docking. And again, docking is autonomous. Dragon is an autonomous vehicle. So the astronauts still are just monitoring all the way until the vehicle basically latches on to the International Space Station. We'll start hearing more and more chatter too as we get closer between all the crew members. Um, and one of the, the call outs that we'll hear just as the crew is about to make contact with the International Space Station is CHOP, or that stands for Crew Hands Off Point. That's about two meters from the space station. Uh, at that point, the crew should not be sending any commands to Dragon. However, again, we really don't anticipate that they would be um, because it is an autonomous docking. So about 10 minutes away till we reach waypoint one. Again, we're gonna move right on through, head to that waypoint two hold point, And then we are about 20 minutes away from docking itself. And make sure it stays in the expected zones. Hoburg will also be primed for hatch opening operations once Dragon is docked. He'll start by opening the large hatch on node two Zenith, which will give him access into the pressurized mating adapter. The crew will then have to pressurize the vestibule, which is this. And there you can see on your screen, this is a view from Dragon approaching the International Space Station. You can see how close it is. You can begin to see those details on the station and looking straight. Right now we are at 23 meters from the space station, continuing to close in on that Zenith port of Node 2. Down toward the bottom of your screen, you can see the nose cone of Dragon Endeavor, which brought the Crew, seven, or Crew 6 astronauts to the International Space Station. So we're expecting to hear the call for waypoint two shortly where we will do a brief pause before moving in towards the docking port. One meter.
Falcon Dragon, we see soft capture complete and attenuation will begin shortly.